here actually. Okay, um, welcome everyone. I uh, just wanna say hi, my name is Mike Sullivan. I am Director of E-Learning here at Middlesex County College. As of right now, just so everyone knows, you're defaulted to mute just because of background noises and everything we typically do this um, when students come on. Um, towards the end, I'll go ahead and unmute everyone, but for now, just so we can get through everything, um, I'm gonna keep you guys muted. There's an area where you can uh, chat. There should be a chat window. Hopefully you can see it. Uh, let's see if I can pull up my chat area here. Uh, let's see. This is my chats. All I see is your full screen, Mike. I don't okay. Know. You might have oh, to go to the it. bottom. If you if you if you go to the bottom, um, it gives you a couple of options, and one of them is chat. And if you click mm -hmm. on that, that'll open up the chat to your right. Yeah. Can you put your hand and see? Hi, I'm Shannon Osborne Jones. I'm the assistant director of eLearning. So we are gonna be here together. Mike and I will go back and forth. So <laughs> yes, and there's still people coming in. We have about four minutes before we'll officially start. Um, we have 15 in so far. So hang tight. It's good to see everyone. I can see everyone here. Yeah. I thought there was a feature too where you could see um, I suppose when there's a lot of people and you can't see that many faces or maybe it's when you're sharing the screen that it just shows everybody at the top I think so yeah yeah okay people are still coming in uh, we have about four minutes we're at 16 participants great hi here So while we're waiting, um, just I want to give everyone a heads up. We are just bear with us with everything. Everything's been kind of warp one, you know, ahead with us. So we're trying to kind of get everything going. Um, we're getting some kind of new stuff where we'll be implementing it as well, where it'll be a little bit easier on everyone. Um, so just kind of bear with us. We'll do all we can to assist all of you. Um, this week is going to be kind of hectic because we are trying to give trainings as best we can. We're doing face to face. We're doing drop-ins, we're doing um, remote sessions via Zoom. So it, there's going to be a lot going on. So um, just kind of bear with us uh, at this point. We're for any kind of questions in regards to how to set something up or how to convert something in the online environment. Uh, the department chairs are kind of our tier one where they can assist you. Um, and then once we get kind of past these few, first few days, we'll be able to kind of assist everyone a little bit better. Um, just right now, it's this massive kind of uh, get everyone in, get everyone trained. And so, um, you know, bear with us. <laughs> I'm dressed down a little bit today, but I am representing Middlesex here. Um, so uh, <laughs> it's been kind of nonstop go for us since last week. I've been online like basically every night till one o'clock. My wife hates me right now. Um, so oh, it's been fun. So I was right now we're at 24 participants. Fantastic. Yeah. Looking forward to this. Yeah, we have a lot of stuff that we want to go through with you. We're going to go through this very briefly. And as Mike said, send us emails. We'll do the best we can to respond. But certainly through at least Wednesday, um, there may be a little bit of delay in our responding just because we're doing back-to-back -back trainings to try and get everybody. So bear with us. We will do the best we can to support you. <laughs> <laughs> but I think nobody really knows, you know, nobody was really expecting quite this much. So Correct. Oh, there's a chat. Someone jumped in the chat. Let me see here. Yeah. We are recording this session. Yes. I made sure to start it going. What will happen is um, once we're done recording, I will convert this and put this up into YouTube. So um, that way it's archived and it can be accessed by anyone. I will add this into the global announcement area. That way everyone can get to it as well. People, I'm still admitting people in here. I have to change that setting. Yeah, there's one more minute anyway. So. So we're 29 right now. So for the, those of you who are just coming in right now, um, we have everyone kind of muted just so we can kind of get going with this presentation. Um, I'm gonna be showing you a few different things, um, kind of Zoom, I'm gonna be showing you Canvas, I'm gonna be showing you a little bit of Office 365, um, just so everyone's kind of a little bit comfortable with using everything. Um, everyone coming in is muted right from the get-go, and then once 
we're kind of done with our spiel. We'll open it up to questions. Um, in regards to kind of putting content online, like your whole class and everything like that, that might be a separate discussion. Um, there might be a conversation you want to have as well with your um, department chair, just because um, they're more familiar with the content that you have. Um, so uh, bear with us again. We, and to remind everyone, we are a department of 2.5. Um, so, you know, we're supporting what over 8,000 students with a couple hundred faculty and instructors. So, um, you know, if we can't get back to you immediately, just kind of hang in there. I promise we will get back to all of you. And the reason I'm wearing my hat is because I did lo lose all of my hair within this past week. So, yeah. <laughs> I got a few new gray ones too. So, uh. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. Okay, right. so yep, right. it's two o'clock right now. Um, for those of you who've just come in, my name is Michael Sullivan. I'm director of e-learning here at Middlesex County College. Um, with me, I have my assistant director. I have Shannon Osborne Jones. She just started with the group, um, or the group, the people with the team, what a couple weeks ago. Um, Shannon's been an invaluable um, assistant to me. I can't thank her for enough for all the stuff she's done. And oh, um, you're so sweet. So yes, so I'm still admitting people in here, so okay. change that setting. I don't know, can you hear me? Um, yes, we are, we're kind of right now, we're kind of muting everyone just because we wanna kind of get through this and then we'll open okay. it up to questions. There's a chat window that Shannon can um, yeah. kind of pre-answer questions and then once we're done with our spiel, we can kind of answer whatever comes through yeah. to us. So at the moment, if you have any questions, just write them in chat and I will uh, endeavor to, uh, to respond. And... All right, so people are coming in defaulting uh, unmuted, but it should change. All right, okay. so welcome everyone. We have almost 40 people in here, this is crazy. Um, so uh, first off, I wanna kind of gloss over, you know, synchronous tools. Um, we're using Zoom. I know initial kind of uh, documentation we put out there, we were kind of going to use Canvas uh, conferences. Um, we had an issue with Canvas conferences because it can only record and archive for up to two weeks. So that being said, you know, the scramble was on, well, what can we get that we can ar archive for longer on more of an individual basis? And the, basically we came to Zoom um, Zoom allows users to kind of archive sessions. We can, you can share links for as long as you want. Um, you can download the files. We can put them up into YouTube, which was, um, we could not do that with Canvas conferences. There was a great deal provided by NJ Edge and Zoom where it was less than $30 a user. So we jumped in on that. So the college is purchasing over five, like 500 licenses. So, um, that's kind of why we're switching from conferences over to Zoom. Um, Zoom is a lot easier to use in my opinion. Um, it's more kind of, if you've been on any kind of webinar, it's typically usually Zoom or it is, uh, you know, WebEx or kind of one of the big three like that. So with Zoom, um, when everyone starts it, no, um, I don't think we're gonna crash with Zoom. Zoom, we can have over a hundred users. So um, it should be okay in that regard. Um, so we pick Zoom, so I'm gonna walk you through kind of um, logging into Zoom, how you can add it into your course shell in Canvas, and then we're gonna kind of cover how to you know, create assignments real quick. Uh, we're gonna do quizzes, uh, brief gradebook, and then a little bit of Office 365. So I know we're gonna be throwing everything but the kitchen sink at you. So um, just kind of buckle up and we'll do our best to kind of um, address any questions that you may have. Um, I know Linda's on this session as well, so hopefully I don't mess up in front of my boss. So um, that being said, I am using Zoom right now. Um, with Zoom, it has a lot of features. Wow, there's still people coming in. We're at 46. I have to change it. Um, deep breath, Mike, deep breath. It's gonna be okay. <laughs> so with Zoom, um, it's pretty, what we're kind of guiding, we're going to be advising people to do, and we're creating documentation for it. Um, this was kind of a last minute decision to switch over to Zoom. Um, so hold on here, I'm still admitting people in. Wow, okay. Do you want me to, to start off with just talking about the difference between synchronous and asynchronous? Yes, please do. Okay, <laughs> all right, so I'll go ahead and take it while you're still admitting people in and just talk about, uh, the first thing is, is that obviously everybody's gonna wanna run and just run a Zoom session and hold their class like they would um, in a face-to-face -face session. And you can do that definitely to start. Um, 
but you're going to find that it's harder to keep the students attention so you need to think about maybe ways that you can uh, um, do assignments asynchronously so things that you could post online that they could work on on their own and then bring to your zoom sessions that's going to be the first thing that just for the, the pedagogy um, obviously when we use the term synchronous we mean that you're on the computer at the same time as the students doing a zoom session something like this um, canvas also has a chat function uh, you'll find it in the the left hand menu the chat function um, so you could be on having a chat with the students at the same time and those are synchronous that's where the students know that you're still there um, the kind of beauty of online learning is the asynchronous aspect the fact that you can post assignments and students can get to them when they have time so that's going to be the kind of the first thing that you need to think about from kind of a ped uh, pedagogical perspective is what can you pull out of what you might normally put in a lecture and have them work on in advance and bring to the lecture um, it just will make the sessions move more quickly um, like we said for the synchronous zoom is going to be the, the best way forward it's great you just get a little link like you all saw you click the link and it brings you into the session um, as the the facilitator of the session you are able to um, control people's volume um, you know like mute like Mike muted everybody out um, <clears throat> you can admit people you can share your screen you can record um, you can um, upload a, a presentation with this too. So if you want to just run through your PowerPoint or something like that to make it easier, um, those are all possible. Um, so yeah, let's see. Um, Zoom, as I said, you're going to each get your licenses. We're still working out the fine tunes of how to, or the fine tuning of how to link it into Canvas. Um, Mike, did you have an example uh, on your on your screen? You had one, uh, not on the Firefox, but on the other where you had it what it's gonna it's gonna show up in the menu here we go here's our here's our canvas page as you can see um yeah there we go so we're working on this this is going to be what your new shell is going to look like from from uh summer um any classes from summer and you can see the new links that we've put in i'm excited about that because i think it looks pretty but over to the left you can see uh in the menu under home there's zoom we will put it up there. We're still working on the fine tuning. And then from there, you will sign into your Zoom account and then you'll be able to schedule your conferences so the students will know when to expect you online. You still need to think about keeping up uh, communication with your students. You need to uh, reach out to them via uh, announcements or inbox. Hopefully, if you haven't used those tools before, uh, you should take a look at them now. Like, for example, here, it, what you can see on the screen, it says announcements, and then there's the little I next to it because no announcements have ever been sent from here. That little crossed out I will disappear as soon as we send an announcement. Announcements are a great way to contact your students because it goes directly to their phones. Most of our students use the Canvas app so they're set to get the notifications the other way to contact your students on a regular basis is through the inbox this is a um, it's similar to email but it's like a closed system with just your class so if you uh, if you are familiar with these tools forgive me for going over them but I, i'm not sure exactly where everybody is in the group so that's why i'm kind of starting from scratch and moving forward um, the main thing to to keep in mind through this online learning is keep the communication going students need to know that you're there um, so maybe you want to set a reminder on your phone uh, just to send them an email once a week or twice a week uh, this is on top of the zoom sessions just to let them know what to expect uh, so that's that's it shifting your classes online the main thing is to run your class with zoom nice and simple you could do that if you uh, don't have a webcam or if you do not have a computer that can handle zoom you can still communicate with your students using email using Microsoft Outlook we'll go into that a little bit later uh, different ways that you can still uh, have a, a collaborative experience with your students online so if you're not going to use our so the first way to do it is through Zoom. Sorry, I'm just checking my notes here. Um, see what's next. Is there anything else we need to cover particularly in Zoom, Mike, do you think? Uh, no, so I think we're still getting people in. So I, yeah. we're getting a lot of uh, questions in the chat box. We're, you know, yeah. So Shannon, if you can kind of answer them. Yeah. Sure. Think, so we can, we're gonna end up answering questions forever if we don't yeah. get through the-, the Right, 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 so, right. Um, so, with Zoom, um, you do have a lot of capabilities and you know you can do whiteboarding. 
Um, right now I'm sharing my screen, but if I were to you know, switch to something else, there is a whiteboard here where I can actually, if it comes up here, share. I have a whiteboard here that I can annotate. You know, um, if you have like an iPad with a Apple Pencil, you can use that, or you can type in here and use text. Um, you know, um, Um, there is like a toolbox up here. Unfortunately, it's not visible that you can see, but you can do, you can draw, you can do stamps, you can do spotlighting, um, formatting, uh, undo, redo, um, different things like that. I can save everything from the whiteboard here if I want. Um, but yeah, you can draw, you can annotate um, any drawings. So say if I do have a PowerPoint up, it can be annotated as well. Um, and then it can be saved. So let me clear my drawings here. So, you know, there is whiteboard capability within Zoom. So I know that's a lot of questions that are popping up right now. Yes, there is whiteboard capability. Um, let me jump back to my screen here. Um, so then from there, also with Zoom, you know, it, one of the big things is microphone. A lot of people have been asking what kind of computer can they use um, for Zoom? Typically, if you have a computer that's five years old or newer, um, you should be pretty good. Most of the computers do have a mic that's kind of internal as well, most of the laptops that have come out today, they do have a webcam. I'm using my MacBook Pro right now. Um, if not, I know there are webcams. If you choose to use webcam, you can get them relatively cheaply off Amazon for like $10. Um, so, you know, those are different options that you can use. Like I said, you can use an iPad in there. Um, you can download the Zoom app and kind of go from there. There's an automatic whiteboard where you can annotate if you just want to use your finger to write or there is an Apple Pencil or stylus, you can use that as well. Um, in Zoom also, I can give, there, there are breakout rooms that can be provided. Um, I'm just trying to show here because the box is hidden, of course. Um, I can record, I can do recordings for Zoom. Um, they share into an area in your cloud, which I'm gonna go over in a few seconds. Um, what'll happen there is once it's saved, uh, we can throw it up to YouTube or if you can contact us, we can work and get it up into YouTube. And um, we are working on annotation tools, um, captioning tools. Hopefully everything will be approved by the end of uh, next week or before early next week. Uh, that way, we can, once the video is uploaded right away, it'll be captioned immediately. So you wouldn't even have to worry about that. Um, so there's more info to come on that, I promise you. But in the meantime here, so I'm going to jump over to kind of the Zoom main screen. So basically everyone will be given an, a Zoom account um, so I'm just jumping over to Zoom, and I'm going to show you how you can integrate it within Canvas for your students. So upon, you know, basically once I come into Zoom here, it's going to ask me to log in. Everyone will most likely be given an invite um, once the profiles have been acquired, which will most likely be Monday. Um, so you'll receive an invite. You're going to go into Zoom. Uh, in there, there's, you're going to sign in. And that takes you into this page right here. So this is kind of like my Zoom kind of profile page. Um, basically, I mean, you can schedule meetings and webinars and all that fun stuff, but right here is kind of the main link that I'm concerned about. This is a link that I can just share and what I did, and that's the link that all of you received basically from Linda uh, on the document that she sent out was this link. I basically just copy and paste this link anywhere I go and I can just jump into my session and there are all of you. Um, so there's that. I'm still admitting people in. <laughs> this is crazy. Everybody's. I'm still admitting. Ready to get geared up. Everybody's ready to get geared up. Yes. Okay. So in there also, you know, for profile, that's, you know, essentially this is the info right here. So right when you log in, you'll be taken to this screen. And then this is my link that I would use right here to copy and paste in anywhere. I'm going to show you where you can put it into Canvas. Uh, and then, you know, where you can link it out and the students will have access to it. In here are meetings. If you want to do a predefined meeting, you can schedule a new meeting if you want to, um, where you, if you have a certain date, um, if you want it, that way you could mail out like the link um, where it has a little bit more specific detail. If some people have a, um, you can add it to iCal, you can add it to your Google Calendar. Um, if I want to schedule a new meeting here, I can give it, you know, class time. 2.30 Wednesday. Give a little description if you want. Um, 
And then I can give a date here. Maybe I want to schedule it for the 16th at maybe say two o'clock PM duration. Usually I go, I would set it longer than it would need to be. You can make it two hours. If you want, you can make it a half an hour. It's up to you. Um, and then from there, I wouldn't check where it says uh, registration required meeting ID. It generates automatically. There's a meeting password. I typically turn that off. That way it's one less thing students have to remember. And this is all upon again, I logged into Zoom and I just went over here into meetings area. And like I said, everyone will be getting a profile. And then in here I can check off where it says enable join before host. So that's if your students want to go in, um, you know, they'll be there waiting for you when you get, get in. Right now I have it set to where students kind of are in a waiting room and then um, I admit them in, which was a mistake on my part. <laughs> and then in here, I can record the meeting automatically. It asks, and this was the big key factor why we're getting Zoom, it can save on a local computer or it can save into the cloud. Um, so if I'm done, I can click on save and then I have a meeting scheduled. And then what happens then, it asks me, it, I can provide a link for a Google Calendar, for Outlook Calendar, Yahoo Calendar, or I can copy the invite if I wanted to. And then here it is, and I can copy and paste this to an email if I wanted. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. Someone's mic is on and it's really loud. Yes, I think also once we get the integration set up, it will automatically, um, at least what I read in the documentation, it will automatically um, update the Canvas calendar. So, yes. Um, it will we'll have a better integration within Canvas, but this is for the time being, this is kind of what we're using, um, at least until we get the integration going, hopefully on Monday. And then in here, after the meetings, you have webinars. This gives a little bit of info there. We're not set up to get webinars, um, just set up for meetings. And one of the big things here is recordings. Oh my God, someone is. Yeah. Is there somebody that's not muted? I'm using my phone and a computer. Oh, can you turn one of them off, please? Sure, sure, sure. Okay. So in the recordings area here, this is kind of, this is recording all of the Zoom meetings that I've had in the past. Um, one of the cool things is I can either, if I check it, I can share it if I want. I can, you know, publicly or only authenticated users can view it, but publicly is fine with me. And here's the info here. I can copy to a clipboard and then I can email it or message it to someone in Canvas. Um, so that way, maybe if you want to run a zoom session you can record it right here and then with no students in it if you're more comfortable that way and then you can send it out to students the other way is if you wanted to you can download your session um, i'm going to suggest if you were to download your session i would upload it into youtube i wouldn't exactly put it into canvas canvas by default is not a streaming server so what happens if you were to click and add this file into canvas basically you might be asking them to download a 200 megabyte file thus obliterating their data plan if they do have it. So um, if you were to put it up on YouTube, it's a streaming server, it's less data that's going through. Um, that's the best way to do it. Um, hopefully with one of the services we're getting, which um, we won't have to worry about any of this. So I'll have more info on that on Monday. Hopefully everything will be okay, then we'll be able to use that. But for now, um, I would suggest if you were to download a file, you can put it up into YouTube. Um, next. In the area here, I have settings. And this is just kind of, you know, adding toggle, you know, toggling whatever kind of specific things that you want per each of your meetings. You know, one, you can mute participants upon entry, which I do have it checked off. Um, different things, um, you can embed passwords, require passwords, and so on. So, you know, you can go in. The best bet is once you do get your account is to play around with it. Um, and then, you know, we'll do our best that we can to support you and answer any questions that you may have. Um, so that's kind of Zoom a little bit in, in a nutshell um, from there. So primarily, though, in the profile area on the left hand side here, if you click on it, it's just this little link here. That's all you need. And I'm going to do it right now. I'm going to copy this link and I'm going to put it into Canvas right now. So here's a link. This is basically my area here, whenever I log in, it takes me, you know, this is my kind of meeting area, my personal space. So I'm copying it, I can right click, copy. And then I can jump into Canvas. Do I have a browser open here? I do. Yeah, there's one up at the top, there you go. Yes, 
Okay, so I created kind of a basic, um, or Shannon created a basic kind of Canvas training shell. By default, all of you receive a Canvas shell um, for any class that you're teaching. Um, if you're having issues logging into Canvas, I strongly suggest reaching out to IT. Unfortunately, we're unable to uh, assist with login issues with, within Canvas. Once they get you up and going, yes, you can reach out to us. We'll do what we can to help you. Um, but for right now, so here's my class. This is just kind of a shell here that I created for this, this instance here for this training. I can go into the modules area. Modules area is kind of like the heart and soul, kind of the you know, meat and potatoes of your course. Um, this is kind of like, it, it, it's the wrapper that you know, contains everything. So in this case here, I have a few things already kind of pre-created for our students, student resources. And then we also have Read Speaker uh, installed in Canvas as well. So I'm going about this kind of, some of you have not used Canvas before, so I'm just kind of showing you a brief, you know, tutorial here on Canvas as well. So in this case here, um, so I have that link, don't forget that I saved. Um, I went into my modules area here. I'm clicking just on plus module. I can give it a module name, maybe like week, what, are, what week are we in now? Week seven, week eight. Right, and I can click on add module. And so I have the link, don't forget. So I'm clicking and dragging it up. I have that link that I've saved. So in this case here, I wanna to click to publish it. I click on the plus sign here because I wanna work within this module. So there's a plus sign right here. I could go ahead and select, where is it? External URL if I want. And then I can give it URL here. I can give it a name. Let's see, I will call it um, our session. And I can even say um, login Tuesday at 10. If I save it, so here it is right here. If I were to click, click on it right now, it would launch up another Zoom window, so it would be kind of crazy. Um, but here it is right here. So basically, here's the link that I copied over from my profile area here in Zoom. And we're gonna provide documentation on how to get to Zoom. It's just zoom.us. And then I created a new module, plus module. I named it week eight. And then within the module itself, I clicked on the plus button and I just did ex add external URL. I pasted the URL in here and then I gave it a name. So that was, that's how basically you would add a link uh, to your Zoom session temporarily, at least for now. Um, once we get everything up and running, we'll be able to kind of use this Zoom link here on the left-hand side a little bit more, um, hopefully on Monday. So that- One other thing that, oh, sorry, go sorry. No, go ahead. I was just gonna say one other thing that's great about Zoom is say you don't want to hold this face-to-face -face session, you can, um, at the bottom, there's the option to, to record a Zoom session. So you could log into your own account, be the only person in the room, record a lecture. And the good thing about that is I believe if you record the lectures, it'll put a uh, captioning on it. Isn't that right, Mike? Correct, yes. Yeah, if you, if you pre-record your lecture, um, it will put the captioning on it, which is a, is a big deal for ADA compliance. So say you don't wanna see your students' faces, but you still want them to have uh, a, a lecture to watch. That's an option as well to pre-record. Um, yes. And then just, just link into the, the pre-recorded session for the students to watch. And then you could, you know, I'm sharing my screen right now. If I wanted to, I could just pull up my PowerPoint right now. I have PowerPoint loading up. So if you see my PowerPoint screen here, I can do, um, oh, I don't know, something on, you know, here's something that we use for adjunct faculty development day. Uh, PowerPoint should be loading up. And so you could literally just kind of run your session as you're recording right now, talking, going over your lecture right here and advancing the slides. So you can do this if you wanted by yourself because you're recording. Or if you had your students in here as well, they could see the PowerPoint as you're seeing it right now and you could advance to the slides in this regard. So that's one way you can do it. Um, so, you know, that's one of the great features in Zoom. You can, even if you wanted to, you could actually um, share this right here. You could actually upload the PowerPoint into Zoom and share it as well. So can also- you show the whiteboard really quickly? The whiteboard, yeah. So, 
unfortunately, there's like a box here that you can't see, and it, it's very con. You know, it's frustrating that you can't see it. But there's, I have a little box in front of me here that says like mute, stop video, which I'm recording, manage participants, polling. You can actually do polling in Zoom as well, to make sure everyone's awake and there. But right next to that is a button that says new share. If I click on that, I have an option here. There is for whiteboard and I click on share. And so here's my whiteboard right here. And again, you can use an iPad for this. There is an app for Zoom on the iPad. Um, so if you want to use your finger, if you had like a stylus, you could use that. But right now I have just my mouse. Hi. Or you can actually do text. There's a text box here. I can select my area here that I want to type in. Um, so if you want to put in any equations or anything like that, you could do that as well. Um, so, and then you could actually save anything from your whiteboard here and push it out to your class. So that's kind of the whiteboard um, here, capability in Zoom. Um, it's in the share button. Um, so instead of sharing your screen, you have an option that says share whiteboard. So I'm going to jump back over here. I'm clicking share and I'm going to my desktop here. Share. Okay. So that's kind of, that's zoom, a little bit of zoom and we'll focus more on that um, on, in the one-on-ones as well as, you know, we're, we're going to be doing this all week as well. We're going to be doing this in the evenings. So, um, you know, if there's something you missed this session, we can, we're going to be running this all week. So um, Linda's posted the times on that. So after, you know, adding your link to Zoom in here, um, again, this is for some people who, are, who haven't used Canvas before. Um, if you wanted to post an assignment to your students, um, you can do that through Canvas, um, where students, if they need to submit a paper, they can do it. And that would be, we're staying in the modules area again. Here's modules. I'm clicking on the plus button here. So instead of, I had external URL selected before, now I can actually just go ahead and do assignment. Maybe I want to call it new assignment. Maybe I want to call it um, weekly reflection paper. I can't spell today. Reelection reflection paper. Okay, so I can add the item here. So now it's showing up right here. Um, now I need to go in if I want to give it a little bit of specifications for our students. Um, so if I click on weekly reflection paper. Okay, as before, there's no content in it right now. If I click on edit, which is right here, now I can kind of give a little bit of direction. You know, maybe you want the paper to cover, you know, the first two weeks of your course. Maybe you want it in um, Times Roman font instead of Arial, you know, maybe instead of you want it in font 12, you know, students will try to do 12.5, sometimes 12.75. But this is where you can give specification as far as um, you know what you want. It's got to be ten pages long. Uh, and say Arial font. You know, be sure to use MLA. And so on. So you can give your direction in here, and I can't spell formatting. I'm going to right click. I mean. So I can't spell today. <laughs> MLA format. Thank you. Okay. And now maybe I want to make it say the, the paper that they're submitting is like say hundred points. I can do you know hundred points here. I'm gonna cover groups in a second as part of the as part of the grade book. Um, and then describe points as or I can do percentage. So here's the big thing here, submission type. So there's a couple different things. For submission type, you can create, like right now, because it says no submission, it ends up showing up in your grade book as like a blank header where you can manually input grades if you wanted. But in this case here, for submission type, I can do, I want them to maybe submit it on paper, right? If I were to submit online, they would type in a box here, basically to, um, you know, whatever you ask them to type in the box. But in this case, on paper, they're going to submit, say, a Word document. So in this case here, actually, no, I'm sorry, submit online. I'm sorry. 
They're submitting online. Now you can do a text entry. You can do a website URL. You can do a media recording if you want, if they, you wanted them to record a file or a file upload, which would be a Word document, a PDF, a PowerPoint, whatnot. So I put the check in the box here. And so now what happens here, you can restrict upload file types. So maybe you just want a Word doc. Maybe you just want an, an .xls file. Um, instead of, you know, I know Mac has a different kind of formatting for, you know, pages and so on. So you can specify uh, certain file types here if you wanted to. But I, I typically leave that unchecked. And then plagiarism review. We do have a plagiarism review software. It's called Turnitin here at the college. Um, you can have papers submitted up through it. As of right now, it's defaulted to none. But here you can select Turnitin. And then here you can kind of add a few more settings in here for student repository, if you want to compare submissions against that, other website content or periodicals journaled. And then here you can actually have it exclude your bibliographic materials because it will kind of capture that because there's tech listed out in the web, right? Or exclude quoted materials. So, you know, that's how you can submit it to turn it in. Students can see imme immediately the authentic authenticity report if you want them to. And then, you know, if it's a group assignment, yes. Peer reviews, I typically don't check peer reviews. That's just me. And then in here, I can assign to everyone if I want, and which is fine. You can give your due dates here. Um, date is when this shows up, um, your due date. So it'll show up, say, you know, if you put February 15th or March 15th, right? Anything that's submitted after March 15th, it will show up as late. If you want to hide it from your students, you would check off here that you only want to show till March 15th and then they won't see it at all. If you leave this blank and just keep due, it'll stay open, but when students submit after that date, it will be always late. Um, in some cases, if you say maybe the students miss an assignment or if you have a special student that needs a little bit longer, you can click on add and then add that specific student into the list here and give them a different due date if you'd like. That's kind of assignments um, in a nutshell here. Um, a good to do, tool to use basically. So if you have any paperwork, to, students need to submit papers or anything like that, this is where you would do it and they would submit it here. Um, also, if you want, instead of, you know, if you don't want them to submit online, you can actually have them submit, I'm trying to see here, I'm sorry. Where is it? So if you submit on paper, that's just a manual grade that you would key in here. Um, and then online, basically, you can have them do you can have them do a text entry where it creates a box, and they can type in the box as opposed to uploading a Word file or PDF or anything. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So once I save it, and then I'm just jumping over real quick as a student so they so you can see it. So here's a weekly reflection paper. So I click on, if I'm a student, I click on submit assignment. It gives me information right here available until March 15th. And so right here I have a text entry box. So if you want your students just to type it here as opposed to, you know, Word documents or anything like that, they can type what they need to right there in the text entry field. Or they can upload the file if they want, Word document, so on and so forth. And then they check the box here and then it will submit up into Turnitin and it will do authenticity reporting to make sure uh, the paper is not plagiarized. So let me leave student view right here. So that's kind of submitting an assignment within Canvas. Um, that way, again, if you want your students to submit any work, they would do it right in here. Um, I tend to go through the modules area. Modules kind of has everything right in this area here. Um, if you want your students to be able to say view maybe something of a PDF or PowerPoint that you might have created, you can add that up in here as well in the modules area. There's that plus button again. If you click on the plus button, you have instead now maybe I want to add a file. I can add a file. I can, I can search for a new file on my computer. I can browse. I don't know. Um, I'll just do a PDF here. And then I can click on add item. 
and then here's my PDF right here if I want students to see it. What you can also do, um, if you wanted to provide your students a little bit of guidance, uh, provide them any information since we are moving online, um, you have, again, you have Zoom if you wanted to use that. If you wanted to provide them a little bit of instruction as far as what they need to do for the week, you can create a page in Canvas as well. Creating a page is just, again, if you click on plus, this time, if I wanted to do a page, maybe a new page, uh, I can call it week eight instructions, add item, I have to make sure it's published, I click and drag it to the top. So now I can go in here, I can click into week eight, week eight instructions, and then I can edit. And now I can give a little bit of instructions. Please complete the following. Read pages one through 50. No, view uh, this video, uh, take this quiz, and so on. And then I save it. And so that's created right there. I can go back over to modules area. And then here are my instructions for the week. So the next thing is, I know some of you have asked about quizzing. You can create quizzes in Canvas. And again, I apologize, we're kind of going warp speed here, but I'm trying to cover as much as I can um, within this allotted time here. So you can actually create quizzes as well. In this case here, again, I'm sticking within the modules area here. If I click on plus, instead of adding assignment, I click on quiz. I wanna do a new quiz. I can call it uh, quiz eight. I click on add item. And so here's the quiz right here. So right now it's not published. So anytime I create something, it starts as unpublished. Your students can't see it. I um, if I click publish, they will see it. So I'm clicking on quiz eight. And will let me edit. Okay, so it's not showing the new type of quizzing. Let me uh, cancel out this here real quick. Go back to modules here. All right, let me delete this real quick here. Canvas has a new set of kind of quizzing and I guess it's not defaulting to it right now. What you can do if you want in the quizzes area here, if you click on quizzes, I can click to create a new quiz. This is what I was looking for. I want to use, select new quizzes. Um, Canvas has some new quizzing features that are um, actually really, really nice. So I bulleted new quizzes. I click on submit. I can call it quiz eight. So it's 100 points, yes. Uh, display grade as percentage. If I check this, it won't count towards final grade. That's fine. Um, and then I can give due dates to it. So maybe I want to do on maybe the 16th done and then maybe I only want to show up until the 16th as well. Remember this will just mark it late if the student submitted after this date. This will actually hide it and then I click on save. So now this pops up here and now I can kind of start adding questions if I want into my quiz. Um, in this case here if I click on the plus button it's going to ask me what kind of quiz that I want to do. Um, in this case here, you can do, you know, you can do categorization, file upload formulas, you can do matching, multiple choice, true, false, multiple answer, fill in the blank, and even hotspots. So maybe if you have an anatomy and physiology class, you can load up an image and, and actually point out, you can ask, okay, where is the aorta? And you can have a picture of the heart and students have to actually click where the aorta, aorta is. Um, in this case here, um, I'm a big fan of the categories categorization um, test here. You can actually do something like, if I go here, um, I can call it question one. So in here, um, uh, and I'm sorry for being hokey with this, match the um, food to the appropriate area. 
So in here I can have what, say dinner, right? <laughs> and then dessert. Now in here I can do, you know, I want, for dinner I want steak. I can do turkey, stuffing. And then for dessert, maybe I can do cake. I can do pie. And who doesn't love pudding? And then when I'm done, I can click on done. And I'm just giving one example here. And then maybe I want this part of categorization here. Maybe I want to add a different kind of question next. I can click on the plus button here. Maybe I want to do um, multiple choice. Right, so here I can do um, who was buried in Grant's tomb. Uh, so the correct answer here, of course, is Grant. I can give some different answers here. I can say Elvis. Uh, I can say Jimmy Hoffa. Uh, sorry, bad example. And then uh, maybe, I don't know, uh, I don't know. So that's good enough for me. So now I can go ahead and click on done. Oh, I can't be blank. I don't know, Snoopy. Done. Done, done. All right, while we're waiting for that to be done, I can add one more set, maybe true, false. So I can do true, false, and we're hanging. Oh, question stem. So if you want to see how everything you've done here in the quizzes, you know, the questions that you might have created, you can click to preview. Here's right here. I'm clicking on it. It's not letting me preview. Oh, preview. Come on. So Basically, I can preview the quiz right here. You know, for, you know, match the food to the appropriate area. Definitely stuffing. Definitely steak. Definitely turkey. Here, possible answers for dessert: cake, pudding, pie. Right? Who is buried in Grant's tomb? Definitely Grant. You know, and you get the idea. You can keep adding questions if you want. I know some publishers do give question sets. You can send them to us. Um, we can upload them into Canvas. We have software called um, Respondus. Um, we can load it into Canvas. Just, you know, give us a few days again. We have to give the trainings out to everyone. So, but after that, we can definitely assist getting your content up there. So if I click on submit. Da, 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 auto grading, yay. So I got everything correct. So this is the quizzing area in Canvas. This is what your students would see if they were to take the quiz. So that's how you can create quizzes. Let me jump back over here into my course. Okay. And then if you remember in modules, I couldn't add it into the modules area. It wasn't letting me. Now what I can do, so I'm back in modules, remember, I created the quiz. So modules is like an aggregation area. So it kind of, you can aggregate everything into this area here. It kind of holds all the links of, you know, everything from assignments to quizzes to discussions and so on. So if I click to add here, so maybe I have the quiz eight that I just created. I click on that and I click add item. So that's right there. So here are the three things here. And then another thing you can do within, and you know, since your class is moved to online. So typically, you know, if you were to ask a question in your class, um, you know, students would typically raise their hand, write and answer. So you can do the same thing. Um, the modality changes a little bit. You can actually do a discussion uh, forum. So in here, you can pose a topic and your students can answer that topic um, in what's called a threaded discussion. So what I can do here, if I want, I can go to, again, I'm in my module, week eight. I can click plus. I can add discussion. New topic. I can maybe call it week eight discussion. And so this is where, you know, creating a discussion here, basically, you can kind of see if your students have read or are grasping the content that you are, you've presented. Um, if, you know, if they paid attention in the lecture, 
you can ask them something in here where, you know, in this case here, I clicked on edit. I can say based off of uh, this week's readings, how do you feel about this? You never want to give a yes or no answer because, of course, I can answer yes or no. You definitely want to, you know, get students thinking. You want to get them to kind of write and convey, you know, how they've formulated an answer, how they, um, you know, their interpretation of the information that you're kind of posting out there for them. So in here, what you can do, if you, you can actually add a video in here if you wanted. You can do a whole bunch of different things. And then in this case here, so when I was in grad school, you know, if basically I saw in some cases students, one student who was, you know, did, was good with time management, might have posted, uh, say on a Monday night, the work wasn't due until say Sunday, right? So everyone poached off of that student's ideas. And so therefore there really wasn't much creativity or discussion really flowing in there. So after I type up my topic here, I can sit there and I could put um, users must post first before seeing replies. So if I check that, student has to reply first and then all the different replies will open up after they post first. And again, same thing, you can do available from and until your due dates here, and then you can click on save. So if I go back to modules here, so now if you're noticing here, everything's building up a little bit more different things here. So we have kind of, we have, you know, your instructions that you would give students in the beginning of the week if you wanted to. Um, we have your Zoom, you have your link to Zoom right here. You have an assignment that they might have to submit. And then in here, you might have a file upload that maybe you want them to read. Um, you could actually add that into the instructions area if you wanted to as well. You have the quiz that you've created and you have a discussion form that's created as well. So these are great components towards an online course. And then in here, um, what I can show you next is kind of the grade book, uh, real loose interpretation of it. I'm keeping an eye on my time here. So the grade book is a good running um, for students to see how they're doing within the class. Um, I know some people have set it up, some people haven't. Um, but in this case here, when we start the grade book, the first thing, place we wanna go actually is in our assignments area. And I'll show you why in a second. So if I click on assignments, I have to create categories. So think about your weightings, okay? In your class, you might have papers, you might have tests, you might have discussion forms, you might have, um, um, I don't know, uh, participation in class, um, different kinds of uh, formats where you have different weightings, like maybe tests are 50%, maybe homework is 10%, maybe, um, I don't know, tests or quizzes are 10, 15%. You can kind of set all that up here right now. So in this case here, um, it defaults automatically to assignments. You can change that if you want. So in this case, maybe I want to change it to edit. Maybe we can call this tests. Right? I can click save. The next category I want to create maybe is I'm going to click on plus group right here. Next category maybe is quizzes. creates a quizzes area. Maybe the next category that I, off of my waiting is maybe, uh, I'm trying to think, maybe uh, participation. And then we'll give one more thing. The last thing we can do is maybe uh, journals, I don't know. So I have four things here. So now these are kind of my categories, my buckets that we're kind of throwing, that everything would be kind of weighted with, that, that would be in my syllabus, right? So in this case here, now I can go ahead, I can weight everything. If you notice the three little dots here, if I click on that, I can do assignment, groups, weight. Now I can put a check in the box that says weight final grade based on assignment groups. So now if you notice, I have everything right here. So maybe tests, I do 50%. Quizzes, I'll do, I don't know, 25%. Participation, I'll do 10%. And then journals, I'll do 15%. So now that equals 100%. So I can go ahead and click on save. And so here's everything right here. So, you know, we've created a few things in our module. You know, if you wanted to, you can kind of click and drag everything where it needs to go. Um, so maybe your journals go there, your quizzes go right here. 
and so on. But the cool thing is, so maybe if I go back into the modules area, if I'm creating something new, say maybe I'm creating a new assignment, right? I click on the plus button, it's defaulting to assignment, it read my mind. I'm gonna select new assignment and give it a, a name, uh, week eight, um, week eight, it's, I don't know. I click to add item, it's right here. So it's not published, I have to click to publish it. I click into it now. And so of course I clicked edit, and now if I wanna give it some direction, some information, maybe it's 100 points. And then in here now, assignment group. So this was your weighted group right here. Maybe I wanna click on the drop arrow. So remember we created these, I can do maybe, I can do uh, participation, right? So now that's the group I added to, so it's going to be weighted into that group. I'll do percentage. And so now I can click save. And so now what I can do, so this is saved in my modules area. I can go over to grades. And so here's everything I just created. So it's my test assignments, weekly reflection papers, so it has the weightings right here. Tests are 50%, quizzes are 25, participation's 10, journals and so on, and your total will be right here. So that's kind of, you know, a real quick down and dirty with the grade book right here. Um, there is a way you can grade papers. It's through SpeedGrader, but I think that'll be another session that we can kind of cover. Um, we're gonna be running tons and tons of sessions online. So um, I think that we'll cover that next because we're kind of eclipsing our hour. And then, Real quick, I'm just gonna show you, you do have tools uh, with the college. You do, you know, for messaging, students can message you and you can message students within Canvas. Um, basically, by default, there are three ways students get messaging from uh, Canvas. One is through the inbox, which I'm going to show you right now. The other is grades. If you post any grades, they'll get a notification. And then finally, if there's any new announcement in your course. So you can do announcements as well. So I can show you that too. But in this case here, let me just show you messaging. So in here, I clicked on the inbox right here. If I wanna compose a new message to my class to let them know about anything, I click here to compose a new message. In here, I can click to. Now there's no email address. I, I, first off, I need to select a course. So maybe I'm going to do it in, what are my favorite courses? I have too many here, um, campus training show. So in the to field, there's no, you know, I don't need to remember anyone's email address or anything like that. I can click on the little paper book here, right here. If you, this does not come up to you for you when you click on it, it just means that your class is not published. And I'll show you where you can do that as well. But right now I'm clicking on here. So I have an option all in Canvas training shell. I have teachers I can write to or students. So in this case, I'm gonna click students. I only have one student in my class right now, and that's Anita Luxi. So if I click on her and give a subject, hi, and then you can type in the body area here. It's real simple, nothing crazy going on there. It's not, if you've ever used like Facebook Messenger, um, you can't really bold, italicize or indent or, or underline or anything like that. You can't do it, it's just a simple kind of messaging tool. You can attach files in here as well. Um, so that's an option that you have. If you need to set up, send out your syllabus or anything like that, you can do it right here as well. So I click send, and then the student will get a notification, an email from Outlook saying, hey, a message was sent to you in Canvas. And students can actually reply and so on and so forth, and you can reply as well. Also, um, just to give you a heads up, our students, about 6,600 of our students have the Canvas app on their mobile phone. So most of them do have Canvas um, that they can carry around with them. They can access you know, pretty much all their courses on their mobile device. So um, we last checked again, like I said, 6,600 have the Canvas app installed uh, on their phone um, or, their or their iPad or iPhone or Android device as well. In here also, let me just jump back to my class. You can also send announcements to your students as well that will push out to their phone. Again, it's like an email, one of the three grades, announcements, or um, messaging through Canvas. If you click on announcements, 
I can add a new announcement. Uh, um, online portion. So there's that. And then I can add something, um, you know, welcome class. Put your message in here if you want. You can add things in here. You can insert media. If there was like a YouTube clip, you could add it here in the rich content editor. You can embed it if you want. If there was a link, you can add it um, just for referencing anything. Um, and then if you want to add a picture, you can add a picture in here. It's just different things you can do. And then if you wanted to, you could put an attachment in here as well. So say maybe if you have your syllabus, you can attach it as well right here. And then you can go ahead and just click on save. And then they get the message here. So when they come in the home, you know, if they click on announcements, they'll get a message saying that there's a new, new amount announcement and then there it is. So that's kind of, you know, basically using Canvas within, um, you know, for, for your classes. Just a few um, questions that have come up that I just want to kind of cover in case people weren't following along with the chat. Um, we are going to send something out via Canvas to the students just to show them how to get to, to um, Zoom. But as you can see, it's literally just click, clicking a link. And the most important thing is that you're in contact with your students. So um, it's got to really come through you because you're going to be the one sending them the link. Um, uh, some of the other questions that have come through. A lot of stuff about Zoom, I would suggest as far as doing your presentation, you do a dry run once you get your login from your, your department chair, once you're, the chairs figure out how they're going to hand out these, um, these license, the, their licenses, right, Mike? Yes. Um, and go and have a play around in the session. Record something, see how it works. It's, it's very easy to use software. It really is. Um, even for people who are maybe not so confident, um, but it is possible. We are also going to post up some links for anybody who feels like they need to just update their skills as far as like Word and Excel and PowerPoint. Um, they all have training built into them. So the second you click into Word, if you open templates and type training, there are training sessions for Word, for PowerPoint, for um, Excel. Because like one of the other the things that, that, that we didn't really talk about is that another collaborative effort is you can have students working on assignments outside of class time. Um, they all know Google Docs, but work, Microsoft 365 has the same facility where they can share documents and work on them sim simultaneously, uh, which is just another way for you to, to give them something to do outside of the framework of a face-to-face -face class. Yes. Yep. And then, you know, that, that's kind of segues. It's a great point. Thank you, Shannon. Um, into Office 365. So the college has um, Office 365 by Microsoft. Um, if you were to click on it, so I actually got to it through my MCC. Office 365 has come such a long way from a couple years ago. I used to abhor and detest it. Now I love it beyond belief. Um, it's really kind of come a long way from what it used to be. Um, in here, you have access to all of this stuff. And I would strongly suggest if you, if you have a work computer, I would strongly suggest downloading OneDrive that way it'll kind of sync with everything that's on your drive and you can actually access all of your files remotely. Um, prime example, so I have OneDrive, I can't live without it. So I have OneDrive on my computer at work and it kind of integrates really well and you know quietly. So these are all the files on my computer at work that I have access to. So basically all you have to do, there's get the OneDrive app right here. You would just click to download it right there and basically it'll kind of sync everything in your computer that you can actually access remotely. Um, you know, if, so say your computer's at work, you can actually access everything on this computer. So I have like my Mac at work and then I have my MacBook that I'm in front of right now and I have access to everything in here. And the cool thing is I actually downloaded the app to this Mac and it acts like a real, you know, real file manager, just like, you know, for the finder, for those of you who use Mac or my computer, for those of you who, who use Windows, it's integrated so well, you don't even know, like you don't even have to go to the web page to access all this stuff. Um, the other thing too is, let me pull it up here, um, jump back here. One other thing too that the college does give all of you, um, in case you didn't know, so if you click on your little profile here after logging into Office 365, let's see if it'll let me do it. I think it's my account. You can view, you can install Office 365 on up to five devices. So if you have a Mac, a PC, 
That way, if you need Word on your computer, if you need Office, I mean, if you need PowerPoint or Excel, you can actually install it onto your computer, um, you know, wherever you're working. And the cool thing is all of these apps from Office 365 have great share capabilities where um, it will save on OneDrive basically automatically uh, and you can kind of share it out, push it out to your students, um, you know, you can do different things in that regard. But you have this capability where you can add this to your PC, you have five installs. So definitely take advantage of that. OneDrive, just so you know, OneDrive, we get up to one terabyte of storage um, standard throughout the whole college. So if you've ever seen my email inbox, it's kind of like a never ending kind of thing that just keeps going and going. And I have nowhere, I have not run out of space yet. So, and I've had this for three years and I think I'm only at like maybe a hundred gig. So, yay. <laughs> Um, so, I mean, that kind of, you know, concludes our kind of, you know, presentation for the most part. I, you know, we're going to get documentation out. Everything is kind of unfolded really, really quickly, and we're doing the best that we can to kind of address, answer any questions that you have. Um, I know, I think Linda's on here. I would click to add her on, but I'm sure Linda wants to stay anonymous, at least for a moment or two. Um, Basically, if there are any questions, we're kind of asking all of you to kind of go to your department chairs first. Um, they are power users in Canvas, as well as for software that's out there. They're basically like our tier one, they're kind of our front line. And then from there, um, if they're unable to help you or whatnot, you know, we'll do our best to help you as well. But you know, there's only, keep in mind, there's two of us, we're doing the best we can to kind of answer any questions that fly through our way. And we'll, like I said, we'll do what we can to get as much information out to you as soon and as quickly as possible, um, especially regarding the Zoom integration. Pro trust me, we wanna make things very, very easy. Um, we don't want you to struggle. We don't want you to kind of, you know, get upset or freak out or anything like that. You know, we'll do everything we can to assist you in any way possible. One um, other question that's come up a couple of times is, is can people use conferences instead of Zoom? Yeah, absolutely. 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 The yes. more choices, the better. The, you don't have to choose one or the other. Whatever you feel comfortable with. Like we said, we've encountered some problems with conferences um, in just that way you can't save. Um, but it's there. It's already up and ready for you. So those of you that have prepared for Wednesday already, absolutely go ahead with the plan that you have. Yeah, I mean, Thank you. yeah, without going crazy, yeah. So here's my training shell right here. Conferences is here, yes. And again, there are limitations to it. Um, like I said, you can only save for two weeks. And then actually saving, archiving the file is somewhat, takes a little bit of a know-how to do. But um, I mean, here, I'll show it to you real quick, at least. Uh, it's, um, it's hidden from student view. Oh, it's hidden right now. So conferences, hopefully I won't have like a, my computer won't freak out on me right now. Um, so conferences here, you know, there's the plus button right here. If you click on it, you can name it whatever you want. Week three or week eight, Let's just call it week eight. Don't change anything here to big blue button. And keep in mind, you know, I'm just showing this to show you, but you can't, this can't be archived. Um, so, you know, <laughs> but at least it gets you, you know, if you need something real quickly while we're waiting for the licenses, this is good too. For options, enable recording for this conference. Sure, why not? Um, if I check this, this is gonna omit this. So if I check that no time limit, you can give a description if you want. Okay, and then in here, if you wanted to, same as you could with uh, Zoom, if I uncheck this, if you only want to do like an office hour with one person, you can check on, you know, just Anita look-see, but I'm inviting everyone into my course. If I click update, so now it's right here. So if anything, you would need to guide your students and tell them, okay, when you come into Canvas, you need to go into conferences. Right now I have mine hidden, um, but in this case here, you have a start button. My computer's gonna freak out right now. How would I like to join? Here's the microphone. Um, <laughs> I don't, I'm, I'm worried I'm gonna crash everything. So if, let me close this. So it's asking me if I want to allow my microphone and everything. It can be done, yes. And then in here you have, you know, this is kind of a default screen that comes up with it right here. You can turn on your mic right here. You can turn on your camera right here. You can share your screen right here. Um, 
it automatically defaults, you know, if you don't load anything up like a PowerPoint or anything, it gives you, you know, a blank slide for a whiteboard if you want to write in here. And here are your annotation tools right here. So if I want to write, hopefully it'll let me. It's not going to let me. If you want to, oh, you have to make the, make the text box. Yes. Yeah. So there's, you know, there's your whiteboard right there. You can clear it out uh, if you wanted to. I can trash that and start over and keep writing if I wanted to. You can add your PowerPoints here, upload a presentation if you want, start a poll. Yeah, unfortunately with Zoom, I can't, all the boxes I have are kind of hidden um, from you guys to see, and it makes things a little bit difficult to kind of show me, show you. But in there you have notes, you have chat as well. And so you can do different things in here. So, you know- We have a PDF to too. We have a PDF, which we're gonna distribute um, at yes. some point, which has the pictures in it. So you'll be able to see it. Um, yeah. It's just a matter of getting it distributed. Yeah. Yes. And then you have the start recording button right here. And you can start recording. And again, you only get two weeks out of this and there's really no way I can archive it. It'll show up in the conferences area and that's for two weeks and that's it. So, you know, that's kind of conferences in a nutshell. Um, once you start playing with Zoom, Zoom gives a little bit more capability for saving, for archiving, for pushing up to YouTube. Um, so, I mean, it's that's much easier to use as well. I, I find conferences a bit clunk, or this a big blue button's a little clunky compared to Zoom. So, yes. but whatever you feel comfortable with, like we are just trying to give you tools so you can get through the next two weeks with your class, make sure that you're interacting with your, you know, in, um, interacting with your students. Yeah, so we, I know we've kind of thrown everything at the kitchen sink, but the kitchen sink at you guys, we're here, like I said, we're here as best we can to support you. Your department chairs are there to support you as well. Um, you're not in this alone, <laughs> I promise you. Um, you know, I can tell if there are any power users out there who are using this, definitely helps, you know, if you can help out your, you know, fellow adjuncts or fellow faculty, you know, that the more helpful will be better. Um, you know, we're all in this together, I promise you. I haven't gone to bed earlier than one o'clock every night just trying to get as much info as we can out there. What we plan to do also is we are creating a shell, a Canvas shell, just a quick up and going, get up and going kind of shell that we're going to drop everyone. Um, we're gonna create it for everyone when they log in their dashboard, they'll see it. Um, we've been toying around with maybe adding it. It's only like maybe about eight pages. We might add it to everyone's shell. We're still on the fence about that one. Um, and again, we're running drop-in sessions. We're running, Linda had sent out a schedule as far as drop-ins, presentations. It's gonna be the same stuff. Um, drop-ins, we can definitely do more of a Q&A style, answer any questions that you have. We can run, we'll be running remote sessions as well, because I know for some of you who might not be comfortable, kind of in a bigger environment with everything that's going on. Um, so we'll be Zooming like crazy. <laughs> and um, so just, you know, we're doing everything we can and we promise you one way or the other, you will get a hold of us and we will assist you in any way possible. Are there any questions? I'm just going to get that uh, the schedule that Linda sent out um, and drop it in here. Yeah, I'm going to kind of start unmuting everyone. So if you have something kind of playing in the background, yeah. we ask, you know, turn it down or whatever. But uh, All right. Can you hear the music in my house? No. Is that coming through? There we go. I have a question. Can you hear? Yep. Yeah. Okay. It's Celeste County. Can you just show how you um, posted the PowerPoint into Zoom again? The presentation. Sure. You were turning and I didn't, and I missed that. Thank you. Oh, no problem. Um, I'm trying to think of the best way to show this to you. Um, because the box is hidden. So what I'm going to do? Tell you what. Let me close out of what I have going on over here real quick. Bear with me one second. Come on back. My computer's like, what are you doing? <laughs> um, so just so you can see that because it's not gonna show up on my screen, let me see. If, so I'm gonna put it up like this. So bear with me here one second. Okay. I'm seeing here, bear with me here if my house is a mess. So I don't know, do you see like that box right there where it says like stop share? Trying to get it up closer here. My mic's in the way. Stop share. Is it on? 
You kind okay. of see. So this is a box that comes up um, when you're using Zoom, okay? So if you notice on the left, there's mute, there's stop video, manage participants, there's polling, and where it says okay. there, it's, it's green right there. It's the green arrow pointing up. Next to the remote. Do you see oh, right I see here? it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Click on that. So what will happen is, A, if I had PowerPoint open, it would say application, like it would ask if I want to run PowerPoint. Like a PowerPoint box would be down here. So let me see if I can do that real quick. Is it going to let me do this? So say maybe I have, let me close out of this real quick. So if you notice now, I have a PowerPoint box right here. Yes. So if I clicked on that, like, so I clicked on share, here's PowerPoint. If I click on that, I'm trying to see. If... And then I click on share, there's like a share button down here. I'm trying to finagle this, I'm sorry. Down the bottom right hand side, if I click share, then it comes up. So it's okay. a share button, like this little green button right here. So I click share again, I can go back to my desktop. Okay. So it's kind of, you know, that's the box that you guys can't see. As you're a presenter, your students wouldn't be able to see it as well. Okay. And you, you recommend, you said, to record the present, you can record your lecture. Correct. And then upload your PowerPoint and they'll have access to it. Correct. Okay. You know, and like I said, we'll present, what I'll do, we're going to be creating stuff all week. So, okay. <laughs> like, you know, how to record your session. Trust me, in, instead of doing it like all, like everyone throwing everything at you right now, we'll chunk it out. Well, basically, here's how you record your Zoom sessions. Here's how you post your Zoom session. You know what I mean? We'll break it okay. up and make it a little bit more digestible as comparative to what it is right now. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah, no, no problem. I, I had just a quick question. Um, if you use the quizzes or you use the place where you have them write a text, like a paragraph or so, mm -hmm. as an assignment, where am I going to see what they wrote? Okay, that's a great question. Okay, so let me go in here real quick. Okay, let me jump into Canvas. So that where we're going to go is basically called speed grader. Literally says telemarketer. Okay, so I'm going into my course. Okay, tell you what, actually, let me go in as. Bear with me one second. Oh my God, I'm gonna kill my kid. He removed my back door access. <laughs> All right, bear with me one second. Oh, there it is, Kim's back door. So this is something you don't typically see. I'm jumping in as a student. <coughs> So I'm going into this course right here. So rem remember, I put everything in modules. So I'm in as a student. So this is everything the student sees. Remember, there was all this stuff down here. It's gone now. So in here, I'm going to go into the assignment week eight uh, weekly reflection paper, right? I want to submit my assignment. So if I click submit assignment, it's a text entry that I had selected. Um, Oh, what I think is here, da, da, da. okay, right. Then I'm going to click on submit assignment. So first off, after I submit it, your students will see this. It's submitted, it gives a timestamp, you know, March 14th at 3.14 p.m. So that way they can't give you some kind of story like, oh, it didn't submit, don't know where it went. If they don't see this, it didn't submit. <laughs> so now let me jump in as an instructor.
Like we're seeing you and not your screen. Oh, thank you. Is it coming up now? Yes, I can see the screen. Okay. I can't see the screen. Maybe I did something wrong. Sorry. Basically, if you do like by the pictures, maybe if you see like, are you seeing just me? I still am. I'm. I'm only seeing you. Maybe I did something with my camera. You clicked on on enlarge the picture. Go up on the top right hand corner and do it small so the pictures of the people are small and not full screen. Oh, thank you. So, and we, let me know when that comes up for you if you're able to fix that. Okay, so in here, so I have the paper up. I went into the modules, I went to weekly reflection paper. I am in as the instructor. So, if you notice here now, I have one out of zero out of one submissions graded. So, um, the student has submitted the paper. So I can either go, I can go up here and click on speed grader. And so now speed grader, here's what, this, so remember this was just a text box kind of assignment, text entry. And here's what I typed in here. I can add a grade for that assignment in here. And then I can add a comment. So maybe the student really tanked it like, oh, you gotta, you have to do better. You know, this wasn't that great. You can provide feedback to the student right here. And also, if it is a turn it in assignment, you have, it'll give you like the authenticity kind of, red is bad, <laughs> uh, green is always good, yellow is meh, um, gray is, what did you just type? <laughs> so basically that's kind of where Turnitin will give you a heads up as to kind of the authenticity. You can actually click on it and it will take you out to turn it in and it'll tell you like where it found the instances of, say if, you know, this is red, this indicator here, if it's red, it will take you out and tell you everywhere they pulled that information from. Mike, did you do this as a text submission or yes. upload? Okay, just so if you have your students do it as an upload, you get more um, editing options as well in this to, to provide feedback. Like this where it just says pay per view up at the top, mm -hmm. it doesn't give you a chance to provide feedback to what they've actually done. Um, if you click uh, file uploads, it uploads it as a Word doc and it gives you a few more just editing tools so you can provide uh, comments right to their paper. Just something to keep in mind, both like, you know, there's two different options, but um, I have sort of found that using the file upload uh, gives you more options for grading. Absolutely, yes. You can annotate, you can do whatever, yeah, especially if, if you even had, so if you had an iPad with like an Apple Pencil, um, you could actually annotate the, the heck out of it. I do it for my CSC 105 for our final papers. I actually, you can annotate with a pencil, you can circle, you can pick the color that you want it to be, you can mimic, mimic the red pen the red pen, red pen of death. Um, you can kind of do that. Um, it's really, really cool. I do have, I didn't bring it with me. I have like an extension where I could actually screen shoot in um, my iPad for you guys to see as well. But yeah, you can input your grade here. If you did have a rubric set up, I wasn't gonna show you guys rubrics because that just would have been, everyone would have glazed over and it would have been like deer in headlights, just too much stuff. <laughs> so in assignment comments here, you can add a comment and then your students would receive the comment um, and then that would be that. So if, and then once you're done doing that one, I have a little drop arrow here. So if you had a whole list of students here, you could jump to the next student, then the next student, then the next student and continue on grading uh, their work. Okay. I know, I mean, if you've ever used, I know this is a, a heck of a lot better. I've used Blackboard at other institutions. This is like quick, easy, down and dirty comparative to Blackboard is very involved from what I've seen. Of course, once you put the grade in, it goes into the grade book. So if yes. you've got your grade book set up, you, you don't have to go back and forth and put it in two different places. Correct. Yes, that is true. Are there any other questions? No, you can ask right now. Sorry, I'll just mute that. <laughs> I locked my dog outside. She's not happy with me right now. So uh, any other questions? Let me, I'm still going through and unmuting everyone here. We had, so we had like a total of like 58 people here today.
I think in 33 years. Yeah, I'm trying to unmute you. will you. see um, everyone who is there, just as, as you can see everyone who's in this meeting along the top. So the question about um, how do you take attendance in an online session? Um, if you're doing a Zoom, you can see who's there. So you can take attendance just like you would in class. Um, as far as uh, other options, sort of asynchronous options, uh, um, using discussions is one way to take attendance effectively, give students grades for, for posting responses to each other so you know that they're online. So. Uh, will, the, um, will the students be automatically uploaded? Because I know on Canvas and, and in Teams, it's like everyone is already added to the course in Teams, for example. So will Zoom already have the students that are enrolled in your class automatically uploaded so you'll see when they log on? No, I mean, you I mean, just get a, a link that you would give to them and then they would sign in. Okay, and so then I'll just see who signed in so it won't be enrolled students. Correct, so basically uh, the link that we created over here, remember that link that we grabbed, our weekly Zoom link? Basically, when students click on that, everyone in your class, they're the only ones who have access to this link. As soon as they click on that, it will take them in and it'll ask them, they have to write their names. They have to type in their names into the session. We are getting it, to, we are trying to configure it though, where, it, to explain it shortly, there's an API handshake that goes on um, and that's what we're trying to configure right now where it will definitely pick up students, like full names and everything, it'll use their uh, Middlesex login information upon coming into the room. But for right now, when they click on the link, it should have everyone listed. And you'll see, like I have a list here that says how many participants are in this session right now. I have 32. And then it gives me their names and everything uh, in this list. And again, this, this link, you can actually, you can get the Zoom app, app for your iPad. Um, that way, if you do need a whiteboard, you can just write on it. It'll give you camera capability. It'll give you microphone capability. And I think it'll even let you switch between apps as well. So, um, you know, if you wanted to go that route, you could. Again, um, students, they have the link that they need. There's nothing more you would, as long as you provide that link in Canvas, you can log into your iPad and it'll be just the same as you logging into your computer to give the session, if that makes sense. So for some people, I'm trying to unmute if there's any questions. So if someone's muted and they don't want to be mute, you know, it's not letting me unmute some people, so. Thank you very much. Does anyone have any questions or anything? Hello, Richard, I didn't see you there. How are you, sir? <laughs> Okay, <laughs> so um, is everyone okay? I mean, we can hang on here. If there's any questions, you know, you, you got us. My kids aren't running around screaming. My wife is upstairs, so it's, it's a good time right now. <laughs> Mine are, but I keep muting, so you can't hear them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Shannon. Someone, someone called for Shannon, I think. Me. I have a question. Sure. Uh, just real quick. I mean, I, 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 in terms of the Zoom, um, I got an answer from uh, Shannon in terms of I can I can use my own account that I have right now to set up meetings. Now, I assume that the name, like as, the, as, as students come to the meeting, you know, the name that pops up will pop up because it's, it's sort of fed off of their computers or whatever. They have, where does the name come from if it isn't through Canvas? It'll populate with a name. It'll ask them, you know, when they go in there, it'll ask, what is your name? And they do. Oh, okay. When they, when they log into the meeting? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, they're not even logging in. It's just, it's going to pop up the screen, what's your name, and then that's it. It won't even ask Great. them to log in there. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Anyone? So another, you know, the other, one of the other cool uh, features I've seen Office 365 is Teams. If anyone's ever played with Teams, it's come a long way as well. Uh, I, I'm blown away with how nice Teams is, if anyone's ever seen it. My wife's like, yeah, we use it all the time. <laughs> I'm like, well, we don't really use it, but Teams is another great tool to use. Um, 
as part of the Office 365 suite. Right. So, so everyone okay? You know, again, we're, we're going to get more info out in Zoom. I'm so if anything, our the main area of communication is going to be that we're lucky that we don't, you know, we try not to bombard everyone. Um, we try to put relevant information up here in our announcements area. I know we've kind of taken up a lot of real estate lately, but um, you know, this is where we would kind of post any new information would be right up in this area here to let you know to communicate with you guys. So for any kind of signups, for any kind of sessions that we'll be running, um, yeah, we'll put any kind of info up in here for you guys. I do have a question for Shannon. She, yes. well, Shannon, we do uh, teach French and Italian, so it's, it's a great tool that we have. We have Vista, so it's kind of set up, which is great. However, for Spanish, it's totally the opposite. So it's a good idea that Sibylla said we're going to share it on the other side. So we can share it, we can share the page with the other students. Yes, you can, depending on what documents you have uploaded onto, you might have to do a screenshot with the pages that you want to do. I, um, I don't, I've not used they have the, the book, book. It's mine. They have the book on their own as well. Oh, so that would be something that you might want to talk through with Juan. He'll have a better uh, grasp on how to use that, that book. Um, unfortunately, I don't know that book very well. Right, because you and I, we know how to use the Vista, which is much easier. It's all set up and it's virtual. It's kind of, we have all the tools and the uh, PowerPoints and we can set them up and they have the book and everything. So it's, it's pretty there, much, yeah. much there. Every, every department's going to have a different um, way of going about this because of just the, the requirements for what they're teaching. So, um, yeah. Uh, as far as the shell, we're just finalizing it now. We're putting um, some of the the last, uh, basically all this information that we've covered in this session, as well as a little bit more about pedagogy. Um, it's there, yeah, Mike is circling it right there. If you can see it, the academic preparedness plan. Um, hopefully we will get you all dropped into it uh, with, well, within the next week. And also with the teams on, I love it. I already set it up with three colleges, everything it's set up from Middlesex, whatever college you're teaching, I have three of them already set up. So it's a great tool to, yeah. to chat individually or as a group or as a team. It's amazing. Yeah, I won't lie. It's a good, it is, it is nice. We're using it for our department right now. It's kind of a, a real simplified version of SharePoint, which is what SharePoint should have been. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. Right, it's now, uh, yeah, this is what it's going to look like uh, once we do, once we finish putting some more information in it for you. Um, but, you know, just keep in mind, it's, you know, we're all in a really steep learning curve right now. So we're just going to all, you know. <laughs> Everybody is. Everybody is. We can do. And everything. Some places are, are going to be online longer than we are. Maybe it's going to extend. Who knows? Yeah. So if anything, I have, you know, if you need to come in, stop in, I'll have a big uh, handle of whiskey. We can talk, we can, you know. That's new, Mike, I'm, oh, that's got my attention. <laughs> I'll make some Italian appetizers or something. Hey, why not? I'll take that, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I, I know for most of you, some of you work at night, we are gonna do everything in our power to kind of, my wife's gonna hate me this week and she's fine with that. Um, you know, staying late and everything, I will. Yeah. Um, so that way, if anyone needs to come in, if there are any questions, we can run remote Zoom sessions right off the get-go. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if anything, we'll advertise like Q&A sessions. That might probably be the best thing, Shannon, we can do. Yeah. Smack a Q&A in there, you know, yeah. pepper yeah, it up. The later Zoom sessions, we can see how it goes. Um, yeah, but that's, um, I, yeah. So, yep. So if that's it, you know, we... Um, you know, if there's anything you need. Richard, thank you for dropping in. It's always a pleasure to see you, sir. Zoom Q&A, yeah, definitely. Susan, we will we'll work on that. Yeah. We could probably collaborate and do that together. Yeah. Um, can I mute? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, Sibylla, let me see if I can unmute you. Hold on. <laughs> you had a question. It will not let me unmute you. Huh. <laughs> All right. Here. Oh, yeah. That's so weird. Unmute audio. Nope. 
Is there something that we can jump on afterwards and talk mm -hmm. or are you sure? I don't <laughs> I, want to, yeah, yeah, I don't want to <laughs> we'll make sure we got everyone. I don't want you to feel frustrated or disappointed. Yeah. Well, at least not at all. You can be mad at Zoom maybe, but not. <laughs> You're typing. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. Wonderful. Good luck, you all. Good luck and stay healthy. <laughs> yeah, and we're here for you. Please don't fret. Don't get frustrated. We'll take care of you. Yeah. Thank you. Scouts honor. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Have a good weekend. Have a great weekend. I have my phone on me all weekend, so if there are any questions, you know, it is. Lauren, how'd you get your cool background? <laughs> so. Yeah, have my phone on me. Go ahead and email if there's any questions. You know, we'll do our best to answer you. Um, you know, Shannon or I, or I don't have anything to type, even e-learning at middlesexcc.edu. Here, let me, uh, where's that whiteboard at? <laughs> yeah. I just learned that today. Uh, clear. Okay, so text would be, Let's try this. Uh, Shannon is S. Osborne. Jenna. Noe. Noe. I know. <laughs> and our general box is e-learning. E and just so you know, we're at center three. And our typical hour, hours are 8.30, 4.30, but that's kind of going by the wayside this week. I have a feeling, at least for me, I'm probably better off just staying in the office comparative to coming home. I don't know yet. Um, you know, if there's a definite need, if people are around, I swear I'm not sick. I Lysol, My desk was lysol by an adjunct the other day, which oh, yeah. that was fun. <laughs> yeah. um, so is mine. Actually, our whole office has been lysol so. Yes. So yeah, that's our info there. You know, if you want to stop in, we're 8.30 to 4.30. If we need to stay late, you know, definitely fire an email. We'll see, you know, what we can do, okay? All right, but definitely signing off now. I'm going to stop sharing. I'm going to be the mean kid and stop sharing. Does everyone have the info written down? Lauren, I see you looking up and down. You got it, you got a job down, good, okay. All right, everyone, you have a great day. So Just so you know, this box reminds me of the Brady Bunch. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's so funny, isn't it? Have a great day, everyone. And again, I have my phone on me. If you have a question, fire it away. We'll do the best I can. I might have to refer you to the department chair first because I don't know what each class entails, but um, I will do, I swear, my best to answer everything that you have. Okay? Have a good day. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.